low again. With us today is one of Hollywood's legendary directors of the 30s and 40s. Originally from Georgia, no less, please join us in welcoming the handsome and debonair Vincent Sherman. And now, here's your puckish man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe. As a young Jewish boy growing up in Vienna, Georgia, Vince Sherman, tough, was it tough? And, and you know, in Georgia, not really, very few not Jews. really, no, no. Um, there were only two Jewish families there, and uh, while I knew I was Jewish in my home, mm -hmm. my mother was very orthodox and kept a kosher house and all that kind of thing. Uh -huh. On the outside, I was one of the boys, you know, uh -huh. played on the baseball team, basketball, and uh, I lived the first 16 years of my life in this small town. Wonderful town. Very wholesome and very kind, yeah, right? Yeah, People wonderful. were kind in those days right. to each other. And, um, uh, oh, I, 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 there, there was, as I say, there, there, I was, um, I was friendly with with the with the boys and mm -hmm. with the girls, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I don't think I remember but one little incident uh, that uh, one boy uh, uh, made some anti-Semitic remark, and uh, I fought him, and uh -huh. then his I had him on the ground, and his cousin started to help him, uh -huh. and then my friends uh, stopped him and said, "Not fair, two on uh, one," you know. <laughs> So, um, and it's my hometown, and I said, uh, right. yeah. Then Sherman, left for where after when you decided to become a writer, but actor first? You wanted to be an actor. Well. Or you were an actor. Yes, yes. I, 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 w I was an actor, although that was not what I started out to be. Uh, <laughs> typically, my mother wanted me to be a lawyer, you know, as, as all usual. Jewish mothers want right. you, their sons to be lawyers or doctors. <laughs> and so um, uh, I, that's what I was preparing for. Uh -huh. And I was president of the debating society at Oglethorpe University, where I right. went. And uh, I won a declamation contest when I was in high school. And I was coached by Senator Walter F. George, mm. who was head of the Foreign Relations Committee in those days. He was, had been a, an attorney for my father. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, but when I was in college, uh, they needed somebody to play an old man in a play that they were doing called the Oglethorpe Players Group. And uh, they asked me if I would do it. Uh -huh. I did, and then the next morning, my English professor called me in. He said, um, uh, I don't know what your plans are, he says, but if you can afford it, he said, I would advise you to go to New York and try to become an actor. He and said, I think you have a, a, an instinct for theater. <laughs> and uh, That's it. <laughs> uh, but when I finished college, I had to go to work uh -huh. uh, because my family, my father lost everything. And I got a job selling motion pictures out on the, in, in the four southeastern states. Really? Silent pictures. Uh -huh. Seven dollars and a half a night rental. Uh -huh. And I got, I think I was making thirty-five dollars a week. That's a lot of money, though. A lot of money. A lot of day. money yes, those yes. days. God. In fact, my... Five dollars a day. And uh, we had some bad, my father had an accident, and uh -huh. I had a brother and four sisters. And at one point, I was the only one earning a salary. Uh -huh. And... Uh, uh, my fa they, I brought my family to Atlanta, uh -huh. and then I got a job after selling film. I got a job as a newspaper reporter on the Atlanta Journal. Oh, you've done a lot. Oh, God. But Mr. Edward, uh, uh, Sh uh, Sherman, Vince Sherman, let me tell you. From there, you became an actor, then a writer, and then you came to Hollywood as a director. Yeah. What year was this all? In well, first, I, very, very first directing yeah. job. I left uh, the South because I got an, uh, had an idea uh, while I was on, new on the newspaper. I got an idea for a play, right. and I wrote it with a friend of mine who was in college named Jimmy Lawwood, and we thought we had a successful play going, and we went to New York. Of course, we didn't sell the play, but I had to uh, uh, find some way to make a living, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And I decided, well, I tried the acting thing once in college, and I'll try it again. But I had a southern accent. <laughs> and I'll never forget, I went into a big agent's office and I said, excuse me, you all doing any casting today? And the guy said, what part of the South are you from? And naively I said, well, how'd you all know I was from the South? <laughs> and because I realized how silly it was later on. Uh -huh. But I had to lose my Southern accent. And at last, after many, many months, uh, I, I finally got a job at the Theater Guild uh, in New York as an extra in a Eugene O'Neill's Marco Millions, uh -huh. for which I got $16 a week. Oh, wonderful. And that, that started me in the acting thing. And I was an actor in New York for 10 years. You were there for 10 years? Yeah, for 10 years. And decided to come to Hollywood, or Hollywood brought you? Well, I had been in a play written by Elmer Rice called Counselor at Law in the Chicago Company of Counselor at Law. Right. And uh, they, they sold the story later to Universal, and it was William Wyler's first big picture. And uh, they needed somebody to play a part. I played a young communist in Consulate Law. Uh -huh. It was a very flashy role uh -huh. in a big second act curtain in which I denounced a, a very wealthy uh, Jewish lawyer. Right. So um, when they needed somebody, uh, Elmer Rice recommended me. Uh -huh. And uh, I got a call in New York saying, uh, fly to Hollywood. Uh -huh. We don't guarantee you'll, you'll get the part, but Mr. Wyler wants to see you. Uh -huh. And it's a, a part with John Barrymore. He was playing the lead in the picture. John Barrymore. Yes. So I arrived in Hollywood and uh, staying at the old Hollywood Hotel up on Holly Highland Avenue at right. that time. It's no longer there. And uh, I got a call to come to the studio. Uh -huh. And Wyler, I met Mr. Wyler, very nice to me, and I met John Barrymore. Uh -huh. And he said, well, would, um, would you do the part with Mr. Barrymore as you did it on the stage? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I had played it in Chicago for 20-some-odd weeks, and right, it right. was in my gut, you of know. Of course, of course. So, um, uh, and Barrymore was reading the script. Well, I played it full emotionally, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. When I got through, uh, John put his arm around me. He says, my God, makes me feel like I'm back in New York. <laughs> well, of course, I, was, I loved him from that minute on, uh -huh. and he was very nice to me. And uh, he recommended they put me on the contract, but that didn't work out. But anyway, um, that was my first year. That was 1933. You'd done several in 33. You did Speed, uh, speed Wings, you did, and you did Midnight Al Al Alibi. You've done several. Those were B pictures B at pictures? Columbia. Yeah. I like the word B, the Columbia. Yeah. Okay, and then also you became a writer in 38, My Bill. Well, uh, what was that about? My uh, well, Bill. What happened? That was back in 33 and 34 when I was acting. And I was here for about a year, and then I got tired of it. They only offered me gangsters to do. Uh -huh. And I did about five gangsters. As an actor. As an actor. Yeah. And then I went back to New York. I had come here originally. I mean, uh, uh, later, I came here in the play Dead End. I played the uh, villain. Uh -huh. uh, the same part that Humphrey Bogart played in the picture of Dead End, the gangster. Uh -huh. Yes, of course. And um, a friend of mine brought Briny Foy to see the, the play, down at the Biltmore Theatre, which has been torn down. Right. And uh, he came back afterward and he said, well, what are you going to do when the play closes? I said, go back to New York and uh -huh. maybe work on a play. Uh -huh. So he said, uh, I understand you do some writing, yes? I said, yes. He said, how would you like to write for pictures? Well, it never occurred to me. And I said, well, I don't know. I never thought about it. Right. He said, well, have you got anything you've written lately? I said, well, a couple little one-act plays. He said, come out to the studio at Warner Brothers tomorrow, and we'll talk. At Warner's? At Warner. Ooh. He was the, the head of the bee department. Right. And they used to call him the keeper of the bees. Uh -huh. And uh, then he said to me, um, I showed him two little one-act plays that I had written. He said, uh, well, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll give you $100 a week for 10 weeks, and let's see how it goes. Uh -huh. I said, well, no, I, I couldn't work for $100 a week, not in the picture business. The truth was I was only getting 75 a week in dead end, uh -huh. but the, the pictures in the, in the theater were two different things. Anyway, he said, well, go to lunch, and I'll talk to Mr. Warner, mm -hmm. and then I'll let you know what, what, what happened. I came back after lunch, and uh, he said, uh, uh, and I didn't find out, by the way, what happened at lunch until some time later. Right. Max Arno, who was the casting director at Warner Brothers, told me that what happened was Foy brought my name up to Jack Warner, and Warner said, well, what has he written? What has he had produced? Uh -huh. And Brandy couldn't say anything. He said, well, why should I hire him as a writer? And Arno, who was the casting director, said, did I hear you say Vincent Sherman? He said, uh -huh. yes. He said, 
Jackie said, that's the boy I asked you to sign up as, a, as an actor. As an actor. Uh -huh. And Warner said, oh, you mean he can act too? And he said, <laughs> yes. He said he was very good in counsel at law with John uh -huh. Barrymore. Warner said, okay, sign him up. As an actor, as a writer, and a yes, director. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and he says, if he doesn't work out as a writer, we'll get our money's worth out of him as an actor. <laughs> what was the first directing uh, job you did? The first directing thing. At Warner's. At Warner's was a, a, a little B picture with Humphrey Bogart called The Return of Dr. X. Ooh, really? Yeah. And in those days, uh, Bogart played nothing but villains. And, and he, played, had, he was a B actor oh, at Warner's yes, at yes, that time. You know, well, Bogey was, 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 was a, from, from the theater, uh -huh. and he's just happy to be working, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And um, somebody said to me uh, uh, once, well, how could Bogart do a thing like, like that? He played yeah. a, it's now a cult classic. Of course you know? it is. He played a gangster that had been electrocuted, and I put a white streak in his hair, uh -huh. and he carried around uh -huh. a little rabbit. To keep his was he work. tough to work, Mr. Sherman, at the beginning of his career like that as a B actor, Humphrey Bogart and you? Yeah. Because this is your first. No, he, was, he was wonderful to work with. Was and it? we both came to the theater. And you so worked we, together. Like. Yeah. We knew this was a cornball, uh, corny little, little piece of So uh, you laughed junk. at it. Like. We laughed at it. But at uh -huh. the same time, we did the best we could with yes. it. Make it as good as possible. Uh -huh. And in fact, now people look back on it and it's kind of a cult classic. You know. It certainly is. You know, in 1940, you did a great movie called Saturday's Children uh, with John Garfield, right. one of my favorite actors. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about John Garfield, Mr. John Garfield, the uh, first time I met Garfield was when I was in Consulate Law. He played an office boy. He was yeah. in that also? Yeah, yeah, in the Chicago company. And we became very close friends. Uh, and and uh, uh, They all well, went to Warner Brothers, didn't they? Yeah. Well, I was at Warner's uh -huh. when I heard that they had signed him up. Right. And his first part was in Four Daughters, and he became a star overnight. And in Four he Daughters. Was a very yeah. nice guy, very nice guy, and we were very good friends. Uh huh. Tell me about Underground and the man who talked too much. Ooh, yeah. boy. That, that was a good one. The well, man that talked Underground, too much. believe it or not, I got that. It was an anti Nazi film, one of the few anti Nazi films that was successful. Was it difficult for you? As a Jew, to write such, uh, to direct no, it, such a I thing. No, I was glad to be able to do it. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. um, as a matter of fact, it had been prepared by Anatole Litvak as a B, as an A picture, mm -hmm. uh, under under Hal Wallace, who was the head of the A department. Right. But because Confessions of a Nazi Spy, which Litvak made, was not a commercially successful, mm -hmm. uh, they decided not to do Underground, which was another right. anti-Nazi film, because uh -huh. there had been another anti-Nazi film made at MGM. This country was not interested in what was going on in Germany. Yes. And they were not particularly anti-Hitler at, at all. However, when the script was they given to me... They weren't anti-Hitler, were I'm they? I'm sorry? They weren't anti-Hitler, were they? No, not no. Not really. No, but... Um, uh, uh, it was a, a period where America was isolationist, you right, know, right, America right. first, yeah. and not interested in what was going on in Europe. Of course, we didn't have any idea of the horror that was really going on yes, at that of time. Course. Yes. Um, anyway, Wallace turned down uh, Underground, uh -huh. and they decided not to make it. Well, Warner never liked to spend money on something and then just throw it away. So he sent it down to Foy and said, see how cheap you can make this, and then we'll make it so we don't lose too much money. And Foy sent it to me, and I was very happy to get it because it was, I thought, the possibility of a good picture. Uh -huh. Also, I said, I think this picture will be successful because it gives you some hope at the end and doesn't uh -huh. leave you uh, so despondent. And it was true. Mm -hmm. We made the picture for oh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars, mm -hmm. and it grossed $2 million. Ooh. That's a lot of money those yes, days. Big success. Ah. Old Acquaintance. Tell me about Old Acquaintance. Yes. Betty I, Davis. I must say. Marion Hopkins. The, 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 what happened was this. Yeah. Underground was made into an A picture. Right. I did another little B picture with Thomas Mitchell called Flight from Destiny. Right. That was turned into an A picture. And as a result of those B pictures being turned into A pictures, that's how I got my first A picture. Is that how you got it? That's how I got oh, it. Oh, you know? that's interesting. And that, the first A picture was with Humphrey Bogart. With also, Humphrey Bogart. Well, all through the night. All through the night was your first A picture. That's right. That's right. And it, it, A picture, because it cost $600,000. Also, in that picture, one very unusual thing happened. A few days before I began the picture, Warner called me up, and he said, look, uh, kid, 
He says, uh, uh, I'm giving you two comedians I want you to put in the picture. <laughs> two comedians. I said, Mr. Warner, I have all the comedians I need. I had Wally Ford. I, uh, I, I had um, uh, Frank McHugh. I had Bill Demarest. Uh -huh. And I said, I don't have any parts for, for any more. He said, well, make some parts. <clears throat> he says, I've got two guys here. I said, well, who are they and what do you want me to do? Well, he says, <clears throat> one's a fat guy named Jackie Gleason, and the other is Phil Silvers. He says, I've been paying them $250 a week for the last six months, and he says, I'm tired of paying them, and they're not doing anything. <laughs> Put them in the picture. Make parts for them. I said, okay. And that's who I met the next morning, yeah. and I said to both of them, I said, to, I said, fellas, I don't have anything for you, but Jackie, maybe you can play one of Bogart's henchmen, uh. and Phil, maybe you can play a waiter in the restaurant. Uh -huh. And I said, bring me in some jokes tomorrow, and I'll see if I can fit them in. Phil, uh, 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 Jackie Gleason brought me one page of jokes, uh -huh. and, and Phil Silvers brought me 20 pages. <laughs> <laughs> you anyway, used them? Did you use them? And they're both in the picture. Oh, uh, great. You know? That's great. Uh, That's great. And uh, the picture was successful. Tell me old acquaintance, Betty Davis, um, Marion Hopkins, two great actresses. Yes. That's a movie of all movies. Well, uh, I was not supposed to do that picture. It was I know. Someone it was supposed to be, do, uh, be done by... John Huston? Gold, no, no, Gouling. Okay. Edmund Gouling. Okay. Because Edmund Gouling had done a picture called The Old Maid with them, and, which was successful. And as usual the case, when a picture's successful, they want to do same another one, one you know, yeah. with the same uh, two. Uh, and uh, they sent me the script of uh, Old Acquaintance. Uh, I, so I called Wallace's secretary. He said, read this, and Hal wants to know what you think of it. Right. And I liked it, and I said, um, well, but what happened? I said, Goulding is supposed to make this. Why was it sent to me? He said, well, Goulding had a heart attack. I, I understand later that that was not true. Uh -huh. Goulding got sore because Goulding wanted a certain cameraman on it, and, and Betty Davis wanted a different cameraman, and the studio... Uh, agreed to Betty. Yes, of and course. And Goulding got sore and uh, didn't want to do the picture. She was the lady at Warner's at that time, wasn't yeah, she? Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Tough lady to work with at that time, Mr. Uh, uh, I got along beautifully with her you on did? the first picture. Uh -huh. You know, Because uh, you've done many with her. You've done Mr. Uh, Mr. Scuffington. Yeah. That's well, a tough movie, too. That was tough. Ooh. That was tough. But, but that became personal, you see. What do you mean? Well. <laughs> what do you mean by um, that? I mean this, on Old Acquaintance, everything that I did, Betty would say, oh, I like that. Everything that I suggested, she said, oh, I like that, yeah, yes, right. good. I never had one argument with her, and I said to myself, why do people say she's difficult? She's the easiest actress I ever worked with, uh -huh. intelligent, and we would discuss scenes, and I would suggest things, she would suggest things, and she was excellent. At the end of the picture, we were shooting on Saturday in those days, uh -huh. um, Warner called and said, can you finish the picture tonight? And I said, um, well, uh, it would be late. He said, well, ask Betty if she's willing to work, then we don't have to come back Monday. Right. So I spoke to her, and she says, all right, I'd like to finish it too. Okay. And she said, how late? I said, Betty, it could be midnight or after. She said, well, let's get through with it. Uh, only she said, you'll have to drop me off home. Uh, she was going to spend the weekend with her mother, who lived on Laurel Canyon. Right. And I lived over in Laurel Canyon on the, on the Hollywood side. Uh -huh. So I said, okay. Anyway, uh, we finished the picture, and we're driving out. It's 2 o'clock in the morning we finished. We're driving out. This is Scuffington now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, Betty said, yeah, I'm hungry. Could we stop and get a hamburger? I said, okay. We stopped, made the order, and she said, well, Mr. Sherman, she said, it's been fun working with you. She said, we had a little trouble with Miriam, but you handled her beautifully, <laughs> and I love you. And I said, well, I love you too, meaning I prove I'm, you know. Uh -huh. And my hand was that way, and she put her hand on mine. She says, you don't understand. I mean, I really love you. Uh -huh. Well, it floored me. I, I, I just didn't know what to say. It came uh -huh. as such a sudden sh a shock to me. She t and... Uh, I said, well, well, I'm flattered beyond words. Uh -huh. Anyway, um, we talked some more, uh -huh. and uh, I, I, I was just, I was embarrassed and, and, and overwhelmed, you uh -huh. see. Uh -huh. And finally, I dropped her off at, the, at, at her house. Her mother came outside. We were sitting out at 3 o'clock in the morning talking right. in the car. And her mother yelled out, Are you, is that you, Betty Davis? And I, she said, yes, mother. She said, well, you get in this house right now. Do you know how late it is? <laughs> And I laughed. And uh -huh. 
I, she said, why are you laughing? And I said, well, I haven't heard that since I was in high school, yeah. you know. <laughs> but <clears throat> that was a mother. She had a tough mother, huh? That is there that, yeah. she is. Let's see this, really. Right. Look at you, and this is that you. That was Mr. Skeffington. Mr. Sk this is the, on the set. Yeah. And here is Marion Hopkins, and get a close-up of this one, if you can. Nice. Yeah. Look that, at that. Yeah. Uh, look at you, and yeah. that, are you well, in that, the middle. That picture came about because... Uh, uh, during the picture of old acquaintance, right. I said to uh, Betty and Miriam once, I said, ladies, there are times that I don't think I'm directing this picture, I'm refereeing it, <laughs> because there was such uh, uh, sparring between uh -huh, them uh -huh. for positions and uh, little things, you know. Uh, anyway, it, it's... Is this Marion Hopkins and Betty yeah, here? Yeah. Let's look at this one right here. Can uh, we Miriam, see by the way... Mir oh. Mary was a very skillful actress, there's no question All about that. All acquaintances. Wonderful is, comedian, right? too. She was, wasn't she? Oh, she was very good. Tell very me about good. Jack Warner. Is it true that uh, stories about Mr. Warner, uh, Mr. Sherman? All Jack those... Warner was a tough boss. Yeah, like Mr. Cone at uh, Columbia. Yeah, 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 yeah. What makes him sense? That's why they're so. I like both of them, frankly. I like tough people like that, yeah, don't right. you? Yeah. Uh, um, in some ways, I liked Harry Cone better than I liked Jack, you did? Jack Warner. Why yeah. is that? Yeah. Harry Cohn uh, was like an, uh, 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 like an old-time gangster. Yeah. I never signed a contract with him. Shake hands. That's it. And that's it. That's uh -huh. the deal, you uh -huh. see. Yeah. That's when he asked me to do the picture with Rita Hayward. Um, anyway, my problems with Betty Davis started with uh, uh, Mr. Skeffington. Skeffington, right. Uh, when the picture was over, old acquaintance was over, she wanted me to go to to go with her to to Mexico on a visit. Oh, really? She uh, she yeah. wanted to make an item with you. Yeah, Mr. right. You've had a lot of items with your leading ladies now. Come on. Well, you uh, know. I was I don't know whether I was lucky or unlucky, but they were wonderful women. I mean, she and was Joan a wonderful And Joan Crawford woman. too. Let's get to Joan Crawford. Let's jump over there. There's well, another item. You you directed her in great movies like. Damn, don't cry, Harriet Damn. Craig. Goodbye, Damn. my fancy. Three films with Damn, John. Don't Cry. Great movie. Well, she was a heck of an actress. Was you that know? your very first with uh, Crawford? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Harry Craig. I made Craig. that after I came back. From, I'd been in London doing The Hasty Heart with Ronald Reagan and Patricia Neal. Ronald Richard, Reagan. Yeah. Patricia Neal. And, and Richard Todd. And you, got, you met the Queen there, I think, didn't you, when you yeah, were there? Yeah, I didn't meet her, but I was a, at a command performance, sitting right. four rows in front of the King and the Queen. We uh -huh. turned and... And Must have been exciting yeah. those years. Oh, it was wonderful, yes. wonderful. But, uh, Joan Crawford. Tell me about Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. Tough lady, too. Yes, and I had made up my mind that I would not get involved with her personally, you know. Uh, but you did. And, <laughs> I, 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 I just couldn't help it. I couldn't what help it. What do you mean, it. you couldn't help it? Was she that attractive? or? Well, she was not only attractive and interesting, but she was very aggressive. And I was just well, a, a, a naive country boy to some like extent. Men like that, though. Hey, you're yeah. a Georgia boy. <laughs> you, you could hardly say no to her, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, anyway, yes, we had, we had an affair that lasted for, for the three pictures and some, somewhat after that okay. for a long time. And Rita Hayworth? Uh, that was one picture. Rita Hayworth, in my opinion, was the saddest girl I've ever met. Sad? Yes. Really? Rita... Although a big star was terribly insecure about herself as a human being, she had very little education. She was a dancer at the beginning, she was a, a dancer. flamingo that's dancer. That's right, that's right. A very sweet, uh, vulnerable young lady. Yeah. And uh, um, unfortunately, men took advantage of her. Uh -huh. But um, I, 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 don't, I can't say enough about her as a human being. She was sweet and kind and gentle and scared to death of life. But you dated her. Well, I, it wasn't exactly dating. We had finished the picture, uh -huh. and um, she came by the office when the picture was finished. Mm -hmm. And it was, by the way, a picture that I did not Trinidad, get for the script. The Trinidad thing? Uh, Ephraim and Trinidad. That, with Glenn Ford. Yeah. Her and Glenn Ford, what a great team, because I remember in Gilda. Grant, yeah. Grant, with Gilda first or Trinidad second? Oh, Gilda, Gilda was first. first and yeah. they made a Trinidad after. That's right, yeah. that's right. Okay. Um, the way that came about was I just finished a picture, a, a western with Clark Gable at, over at MGM. Lone Star. Lone Star. And Harry Cohn called and said, come on over, I want to talk to you. Uh -huh. 
And he said, how would you like to make Rita Hayworth's first picture now that she left Ali Khan? I said, well, who wouldn't, you know? I said, you got a script? He said, oh, got a great story. Mm -hmm. I said, could I read it? He said, I'll give you the first 25 pages. Read that. So I read it, and I said, well, it's a springboard. What about the rest of it? He said, well, go downstairs and talk to Virginia Van Up, the writer and the producer who was going to be um, Bert Granite. Right. I went downstairs, and I said, well, I, oh, and Harry said, will you do it? I said, Harry, if you say it's a good story, okay. He says, a deal, shake hands. Uh -huh. I was, uh, uh -huh. So I go downstairs, and I said, well, I'm supposed to do the Rita Hayworth picture. Tell me the rest of the story. Well, two hours later, I left, and I had heard not one story, but six stories, uh -huh. and I was in trouble. Okay. And Bert Granite, who had been an old friend of mine, advised me to get off the picture. I said, I just signed to get on. How uh -huh. can I get off? Right. He said, well, I'm getting off. He says, I don't want to be held responsible for this. Uh -huh. So the next morning, Cohen called me. He says, come on up. i got to talk to you. So I went up, and he said, he's sitting behind his desk. He's grim and angry. He says, I don't like a quitter. He said, Bert Granite quit the picture. And I said, well, Harry, you told me you have a script. But, uh -huh. but there's no, he said, oh, Vince, don't you think I know? He said, I'm in trouble. I need help. He said, she came back, Rita came back, unannounced, and the agent said to me, here, put her on salary. I didn't know she was coming back, and he said, I had to put her on salary. He said, she'd been on salary now for 16 weeks, getting 3500 a week. He said, I don't have any, any picture to make for her. New York is screaming. Uh -huh. He says, make me a picture, a love-hate relationship, an exotic background. Right. He said, with a few dance numbers. And I said, he said, please help me out. I need help. I said, well, if that's the situation, okay, I'll do the best I can. And she was wonderful to here, work with. Look at Rita Hayworth right yeah. here. Look. Can we see it? Can the camera come here? That's my boy. This is wonderful, Vince. She was beautiful. Beautiful woman. Beautiful. Great temper. I loved her. Sweet. She was exciting. And, and Ava Gardner. Here's another one. Look, yeah. show this one right here. Look at Ava Gardner here. Can we look at this? What yeah. was this? Lone Lovely Star? Girl. Lovely girl. Lone Star with Clark Gable. Clark Gable in a wow. western. That was a great movie, yeah. too. And she said to me, she played a, 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 a city editor of a newspaper. Uh huh. And she said to me when, when I first met her, she said, what are they casting me in this for? She said, people don't think I can read, let alone be an editor of a paper. She <laughs> said, I'm good on playing, you know, fallen women, hookers uh -huh. and things like that. This is Ava. Uh, that's Ava. Ava Gardner. Very She weird. always thought she was a hooker type of roles, huh? Yeah. She that's said, sad. I play fallen women. Mm. I'll tell you. Ava and Ann Sheridan, with whom I did two There's pictures. There's another great lady. Wonderful, Ann Sheridan. Wonderful people to work with. Wonderful. You wonderful. Know, both of them very regular. Uh -huh. No affectation, you know, uh, down to earth. What very... movie did you do with Ann Sheridan? Uh, I did Nora Prentice with her. Great, Warner Brothers. Yeah. Great movie. Unfaithful, one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Who was in that, that Mr. Uh, Ann Sheridan, Zachary Scott. That, that's it, Zachary Scott. Yeah. Wonderful Lou, film. Uh, Lou Ayers, yeah. That's, oh, what a great guy. We just lost him recently. That was, by the way, that was a uh, rewrite based on uh, Somerset Maugham is the letter. That's right, it was, wasn't yes, it? That's right. If you could change one thing in your life, Mr. Sherman, what would it be right now? Well, or would you? There, yeah, there, there are two things. I would have fought harder to get Casablanca, and I would have bought the treasure of the Sierra Madre. I submitted the treasure of the Sierra Madre five years before John Houston did. And the studio turned me down. They didn't want to buy it. I should have bought it myself because uh, it made a great picture. On Casablanca... Uh -huh. <clears throat> uh, actor first. You wanted to be an actor. Well... Or you were an actor. Yes, yes. I, 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 I was an actor, although that was not what I started out to be. Uh, <laughs> typically, my mother wanted me to be a lawyer. You know, as, as all usual. Jewish mothers want right. to, their sons to be lawyers or doctors. <laughs> and so... Um, uh, I, that's what I was preparing for, uh -huh. and I was president of the debating society at Oglethorpe University, where I right. went, and uh, I won a declamation contest when I was in high school, and I was coached by Senator Walter F. George, mm. who was head of the Foreign Relations Committee in those days. He was, had been an attorney for my father. Uh -huh. So, uh, uh, but when I was in college, uh, they needed somebody to play an old man in a play that they were doing called the Oglethorpe Players Group. And uh, they asked me if I would do it. Uh -huh. I did, and then the next morning, my English professor called me in. He said, um, uh, 
I don't know what your plans are, he says, but if you can afford it, he said, I would advise you to go to New York and try to become an actor. He said, I think you have a, a, an instinct for theater. And, uh, That's it. Uh, <laughs> but when I finished college, I had to go to work uh -huh. uh, because my family, my father lost everything. And I got a job selling motion pictures out on the, in, in the four southeastern states. Really? Silent pictures. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Seven dollars and a half a night rental. Uh -huh. And I got, I think I was making thirty-five dollars a week. That's a lot of money, though. A lot of money. A lot of money yes, those days. Yes. God. In fact, my five dollars a day. And uh, we had some bad. My father had an accident, and uh -huh. I had a brother and four sisters. And at one point, I was the only one earning a salary. Uh -huh. okay. And. Uh, uh, my fa they, I brought my family to Atlanta, uh -huh. and then I got a job after selling film. I got a job as a newspaper reporter on the Atlanta Journal. Oh, you've done a lot. Oh, God. But, Mr. Edward, uh, uh, Sh uh, Sherman, Vince Sherman, let me tell you. From there, you became an actor, then a writer, and then you came to Hollywood as a director. Yeah. What year was this all? In well, the first, I, very, very first directing yeah. job. I left uh, the South because I got an, uh, had an idea uh, while I was on, new on the newspaper. I got an idea for a play, right. and I wrote it with a friend of mine who was in college named Jimmy Lawwood, and we thought we had a successful play going, and we went to New York. Of course, we didn't sell the play, but I had to uh, uh, find some way to make a living, mm -hmm. and I decided, well, I tried the acting thing. Night al al alibi. You've done several. Those were B pictures in Columbia. Yeah. I like the word B the Columbia. Yeah. Okay, and then also you became a writer in '38, My Bill. Well, uh, what was that about? Uh, My well, Bill. what happened? That was back in '33 and '34 when I was acting, and I was here for about a year, and then I got tired of it. They only offered me gangsters to do, uh -huh. and I did about five gangsters as an actor. As an actor. Yeah. And then I went back to New York. I had come here originally. I mean, uh, uh, later. I came here in the play Dead End. I played the uh, villain, uh -huh. uh, the same part that Humphrey Bogart played in the picture of Dead End, the gangster. Uh -huh. Yes, of course. And uh, a friend of mine brought Briny Foy to see the, the play down at the Biltmore Theater, which has been torn down. Right. And uh, he came back afterward and he said, well, what are you going to do when the play closes? I said, go back to New York and uh -huh. maybe work on a play. Uh -huh. So he said, uh, I understand you do some writing, yes? I said, yes. He said, how would you like to write for pictures? Well, it never occurred to me. And I said, well, I don't know. I never thought about it. Right. He said, well, have you got anything you've written lately? I said, well, a couple little one-act plays. He uh -huh. said, come out to the studio at Warner Brothers tomorrow, and we'll talk. At Warner's. At Warner's. Ooh. He was the, the head of the bee department. Right. And they used to call him the keeper of the bees. Uh -huh. And uh, then he said to me, um, I showed him two little one-act plays that I had written. He said, uh, well, I'll tell you what. He said, I'll give you $100 a week for 10 weeks, and let's see how it goes. Uh -huh. I said, well, no, I, I couldn't work for $100 a week, not in the picture business. The truth was, I was only getting 75 a week in dead end. Uh -huh. But the, the pictures in the, in the theater were two different things. Anyway, he said, well, go to lunch, and I'll talk to Mr. Warner, uh -huh. and then I'll let you know what, what, what happened. I came back after lunch, and uh, he said, uh, uh, and I didn't find out, by the way, what happened at lunch until some time later. Right. Max Arno, who was the casting director at Warner Brothers, told me that what happened was Foy brought my name up to Jack Warner, and Warner said, well, what has he written? What has he had produced? Uh -huh. And Brandy couldn't say anything. He said, well, why should I hire him as a writer? And Arno, who was the casting director, said, did I hear you say Vincent Sherman? He said, uh -huh. yes. He said, Jack, he said, that's the boy I asked you to sign up as, a, as an actor. As an actor. Uh -huh. And Warner said, oh, you mean he can act too? And he said, yes. <laughs> he said he was very good in counsel at law with John uh -huh. Barrymore. And Warner said, okay, sign him up. As an actor, as a writer, and a yes, director. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and he says, if he doesn't work out as a writer, we'll get our money's worth out of him as an actor. <laughs> what was the first directing uh, job you did? The first directing thing. At Warner's. At Warner's was a, a, a little B picture with Humphrey Bogart called The Return of Dr. X. Ooh, really? Yeah. And in those days, uh, Bogart played nothing but villains. And, and he, you played, had, he was a B actor. Oh, at yes, at yes. That time. You know, well, Bogey was, 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 was a, from, from the theater, uh -huh. and he's just happy to be working, uh -huh. you know? Uh -huh. And uh, somebody said to me uh, uh, once, well, how could Bogart do a thing like, like that? He played a, it's now a cult classic. Of course you know? it is. He played a gangster that had been electrocuted, and I put a white streak in his hair, uh -huh. and he carried around uh -huh. a little rabbit. 
to keep his Was he tough to work, Mr. Sherman, at the beginning of his career like that as a B actor, Humphrey Bogart and you? Yeah. Because this is your first. Now, tell he, me. Was, he was wonderful to work with. Was and it? we both came to the theater. And you so worked we, together like yeah, it. Yeah. We knew this was a cornball, uh, corny little little piece of junk. So you uh, laughed junk. at it. Like. We laughed at it. But at the uh -huh. same time, we did the best we could with yes. it. Make it as good as possible. Uh -huh. And in fact, now people look back on it and it's kind of a cult classic, you know. It certainly is. You know, in 1940, you did a great movie called Saturday's Children uh, with John Garfield, right. one of my favorite actors. Yes, yeah. Tell me about John Garfield, Mr. John Garfield, the uh, first time I met Garfield was when I was in counsel at law. He played an office boy. He was yeah. in that also? Yeah, yeah, in the Chicago company. And we became very close friends. Uh, and uh, uh, They all well, went to Warner Brothers, didn't they? Yeah, well, I was at Warner's uh -huh. when I heard that they had signed him up. Right. And his first part was in Four Daughters, and he became a star overnight. And, and Four Daughters. A very nice guy, very nice guy, and we were very good friends. Uh-huh. Tell me about Underground and the man who talked too much. Ooh, yeah. boy. That, that was a good one, the well, man that talked too much. Underground, believe it or not, I got that. It was an anti-Nazi film, one of the few anti-Nazi films that was successful. Was it difficult for you? As a Jew, to write such, uh, to direct no, such it, a thing. No, I was glad to be able to do it. Really? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, as a matter of fact, it had been prepared uh, by Anatole Litvak as a B, as an A picture, mm -hmm. uh, under under Hal Wallace, who was the head of the A department. Right. But because Confessions of a Nazi Spy, which Litvak made, was not a commercially successful, mm -hmm. uh, they decided not to do Underground. Once in college, and I'll try it again, but. I had a southern accent, and I'll never forget, I went into a big agent's office, and I said, excuse me, you all doing any casting today? And the guy said, what part of the South are you from? And naively, I said, well, how'd you all know I was from the South? <laughs> and because I realized how silly it was later on, uh -huh. but I had to lose my southern accent. And at last, after many, many months, uh, I, I finally got a job at the Theater Guild uh, in New York, as an extra in a Eugene O'Neill's Marco Millions, uh -huh. for which I got $16 a week. Oh, wonderful. And that, that started me in the acting thing. And I was an actor in New York for 10 years. You were there for 10 years? Yeah, for 10 years. And decided to come to Hollywood, or Hollywood brought you? Well, I had been in a play written by Elmer Rice called Counselor at Law in the Chicago Company of Counselor at Law. Right. And uh, they, they sold the story later to Universal, and it was William Wyler's first big picture. And uh, they needed somebody to play a part. I played a young communist in Consulate Law, and uh -huh. it was a very flashy role uh -huh. in a big second act curtain in which I denounced a, a very wealthy uh, Jewish lawyer. Right. So um, when they needed somebody, uh, Elmer Rice recommended me. Uh -huh. And uh, I got a call f in New York saying, uh, fly to Hollywood. Uh -huh. We don't guarantee you'll you'll get the part, but Mr. Wyler wants to see you. Uh -huh. And it's a, a part with John Barrymore. He was playing the lead in the picture. John Barrymore. Yes. So I arrived in Hollywood, and uh, staying at the old Hollywood Hotel up on Holly Highland Avenue at right. that time. It's no longer there. And uh, I got a call to come to the studio. Uh -huh. And Wyler, I met Mr. Wyler. Very nice to me. And I met John Barrymore. Uh -huh. And he said, well, would, um, would you do the part with Mr. Barrymore as you did it on the stage? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, I had played it in Chicago for 20-some-odd weeks, and right, it right. was in my gut, you of know. Of course, of course. So, um, uh, and Barrymore was reading the script. Well, I played it full emotionally, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. When I got through, uh, John put his arm around me and says, my God, makes me feel like I'm back in New York. <laughs> well, of course, I, was, I loved him from that minute on, uh -huh. and he was very nice to me. And uh, he recommended they put me on the contract, but that didn't work out. But anyway, um, that was my first year. That was 1933. You've done several in 33. You did Speed, uh, speed Wings, you did, and you did Men. Low again. With us today is one of Hollywood's legendary directors of the 30s and 40s. Originally from Georgia, no less, Please join us in welcoming the handsome and debonair Vincent Sherman. And now, here's your puckish man of the half hour, Skip E. Lowe.
As a young Jewish boy growing up in Vienna, Georgia, Vince Sherman, tough, was it tough? And, and you know, in Georgia, not really, very few not Jews. Really. No? No. Um, there were only two Jewish families there. And uh, while well, I knew I was Jewish in my home, mm -hmm. my mother was very orthodox and kept a kosher house and all that kind of thing. Uh -huh. On the outside, I was one of the boys, you know, uh -huh. played on the baseball team, basketball, and uh, I lived the first 16 years of my life in this small town. Wonderful town. Very wholesome and very kind, yeah, right? Yeah, People wonderful. were kind in those days right. to each other. And, um, uh, oh, I, 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 there, there was, as I say, there, there, I was, um, I was friendly with, with, the, with the boys and mm -hmm. with the girls, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I don't think I remember but one little incident uh, that uh, one boy uh, uh, made some anti-Semitic remark, and uh, I fought him, and uh -huh. then his, I had him on the ground, and his cousin started to help him, uh -huh. and then my friends uh, stopped him and said, it's not fair, two on uh, one, you know. <laughs> So, um, and it's my hometown, and I said, uh, right. yeah. Then Sherman, left for where after when you decided to become a writer? But